Hello everyone, welcome back to this YouTube channel. My name is Kushbu and I welcome you all to this statistics video lecture series again. In this particular video, I am going to discuss one another important topic with you. That is also again very very important if I talk about statistics that is something called as covariance. Okay. Now, where this covariance is required? This covariance is actually very, very helpful when we used to perform data pre-processing means when we used to perform certain kind of analysis on top of our data while doing exploratory data analysis. So at that point of time, this covariance is going to play very, very important role for you. So you need to uh, like understand what actually is covariance, what is its core concept. All right, I'll also be showing you this covariance with the help of an example so that it will be easier for you to get an idea about. Let us first understand this covariance in a simpler word. So here in this covariance, we actually used to find out the relationship between the input and output variable. Suppose let's say for an example, I have input variable and I have an output variable. Okay, now what is the relationship between this x and y have that actually we used to find out with the help of this covariance. Let's say in the x I have the uh, age of the person. Okay, age of the person. Suppose let's say 20, uh, like 20 years old person have the height of or we can say uh, like we can take height in this input and we can take uh, like this y as an output for v. Suppose let's say the height of the person is 5.0 and uh, like uh, the person's weight is 45. Okay. Now the person's height is 5.5 and it is 52. Again, let's say it's 6.0. The height is 6.0 and the weight is 58. So, based on this x, what is the, based on this x that is weight, uh, sorry, that is height, what is the weight of the person? So, as you can see here, as the height is increasing, sorry, as the height is increasing in downwards, here weight is also increasing. So, here what you are concluding about, when the input is increasing, that is my x, Output is also increasing. So here we can understand that this x is positively correlated with this y. That is my output. Means our input is positively correlated with the output. Fine. Now we can also take one another example such as uh, in summer season, let's say the sale in the ice cream raises up, right? In the summer season, let's say, um, as my temperature is increasing, my sale is also increasing. Let's say if, if it is 25 degrees Celsius, the sale in ice cream is 10,000. If it is 30 degrees Celsius, it is like 20,000. If it is 40 degrees Celsius, let's say it is becoming like 50,000. Okay. So, here it is also seems to be positively correlated. My input is positively correlated with the output. This is also called as positively correlated. Now, again, this could also be the situation that my input could be negatively correlated with the output, right? Let's say for an example, in the summer season, the sale in the woolen cloth get decreases, right? The cell in the woolen cloth, let's say, getting decreased. So, that will be termed as negatively correlated. Fine. So, that output will be negatively correlated with the input. So, this particular relation, what you are seeing here, that is positive correlation or negative correlation is actually determined with the help of covariance. So, in total, this covariance is actually used to find the relationship between the input and output random variable we could say all right so i hope you would have got an idea that what does it mean by covariance so to calculate the covariance there is one formula now what is this formula let's say 
So the formula we can write as covariance of x and y. So this is uh, this is the input variable and this is the basically my output variable. And the formula is given by summation of i is equal to 1 till n that is till, uh, till my all the data points and x minus x bar this x bar is nothing but my uh, mean of the input and into y minus y bar y bar is mean of the output variable and it is divided by n minus 1 now here n is the total number of data point in my data set okay so this is the formula with which we can calculate the covariance of a given input and output variable now let us understand it with the help of one example suppose i have the input variable that is x and output variable as y inside x we have the data points such as 2 3 4 and 5 okay uh, sorry 5 and in y we have 5 6 7 and 8 fine this is the random input i have taken so there is no such relationship i have just taken to make you understand okay so this is the input variable and this is the output variable now let's calculate the covariance for this given data set all right so this covariance of x and y will be if you want you can calculate it by yourself you can pause the video and you can just calculate and we can match with my answer all right so here what i'll be doing is x minus x bar fine uh, first of all we will be uh, calculating this n minus 1 so what is the number of my data point in this data set guys so this is four only four data point i have taken right so this will be three right this will be what three so i'll take it outside one by three and then i can perform the calculation over here all right so x minus x bar that is uh yes for this this is the mean right this is the mean and also this is the mean so for that i will uh, need to calculate the mean of my input and output variable so the x bar will be what just tell me i already have uh, like created a video on how to create mean median and mode so if you haven't watched you can go and check out that that will be in this statistics series only so x bar is nothing but here we have only four data point two three four five so here the mid value it could be 3.5 so my mean for the input variable will be 3.5 and similarly for the output we will be having 6.5 here fine so uh, here x minus x bar it will be 2 minus 3.5 so it will be nothing but minus 1.5 minus 1.5 now y minus y bar that is 5 minus 6.5 again it will be minus 1.5 are you guys able to understand that is x minus x bar so here i have taken my data point for input variable that was 2 and this x bar is nothing but mean that we have calculated over here so 2 minus 3.5 is 1.5 here Similarly, 5 minus 6.5, it is one, minus 1 1.5. Similarly, here we have to, uh, we have to uh, like um, sum all the, uh, all the calculation like this. So, we will be adding this. And again, we'll, similarly, we will be taking for uh, that another data point that is 3 minus 3.5. So, it will be what? Minus 0 0.5, right? Now, similarly, calculate for y, that is 6 minus 6.5. Again, it will be minus 0 0.5. Now, again, we will plus it and uh, we will calculate for the another data point, that is 4 minus 3.5, that will be 0 0.5, right? And uh, for the output, 7 minus 6.5, uh, that will be what? 0 0.5 again. Similarly, for the last data point, that is 5 minus 3.5, that is 
and here again 8 minus 6.5 it will be 1.5 right so i guess we have summed up our all the data point now here if you will calculate this the answer that you will be getting is 1.66 okay so you can calculate it by yourself and check it all right so this is the covariance that i got for my input and output variable so this is what with the help of this output what you got to know this is plus right this is not minus so we concluded that this is positively co related sorry this is positively co related now if i uh, like uh, tell you i have an another data set okay for the similar data set i'll be doing but just what i'll do is i will reverse the output that is x and y so the input will be same that is 2 3 4 and 5 and what i'll do is i'll uh, reverse the output variable that is 8 7 6 and 5 now here if i again calculate the covariance this is uh, just why i am doing is i have to show you something so uh, let's calculate again the covariance of x and y so it will be what now i i hope guys you can calculate very fastly as we have already calculated once so 1 by 3 and uh, here again the mean will be same that is x bar will be 3.5 and uh, y bar will be 6.5 fine because our just the data point are same and we have reversed the just output right so 2 minus 3.5 so it will be what it will be minus uh, sorry minus 1.5 again for the output it will be 8 minus 6.5 that is 8 minus 6.5 it will be 1.5 right again for another data point that is 3 minus 3.5 i am doing just very fast guys because we have already done and i don't want to extend this video all right 3 minus 3.5 it will be minus 0.5 into 7 minus 6.5 it will be just 0.5 again for the next data point 4 minus 3.5 it will be 0.5 and 6 minus 6.5 uh, right so it will be what minus 0.5 now again for the last data set we will do 5 minus 3.5 that will be 1.5 and it will be 5 minus 6.5 it will be minus 1. Five. So we have already calculated, and the answer that we you are going to get will be minus one point two percent. Fine. So here, this is showing that it is negatively correlated with the output variable. That is, my input is negatively correlated with the output variable. So here, what it is showing negative correlation. That is negatively correlated. Okay. all right so here very important thing i want to discuss about is this covariance is actually only helpful in determining the relationship with the input and output variable means it will only tell you if your input variable is positively correlated with your output variable or negatively correlated with your output variable so at any point of time So at any point of time, if I want to know that how much my input variable is positively correlated with the output variable, or how much my input variable is negatively correlated with my output variable, so at that point of time, this covariance, this covariance is going to fail. Okay, this covariance is going to fail. So this is the major disadvantage of this covariance. so to overcome this particular scenario scientists or researchers have came up with another technique that is something called as pearson correlation coefficient that is not only going to tell it is positively or negatively correlated but it will also tell that how much positively correlated or how much negatively correlated my input variable is with the output variable so uh, like uh, 
this was just the achievement on top of this covariance now i hope you understood why particularly covariance is actually used in prime statistics all right we will discuss about this pearson correlation coefficient in the next video till then keep learning and keep exploring from your end if in case if you have any query you can ask in the comment section that's it from my side guys thank you so much